Meanwhile, tonight, family, friends, and fellow law enforcement officers are paying their final respects to Richmond Police Officer Sierra Burton. Good evening, I'm Jenny Runovich. Scott and Anne Marie are off tonight. Huge crowds gathered all along the procession route from Richmond today. You can see it there, all the way to Crown Hill Cemetery, and all to honor a hero who lost her life after she was shot in the line of duty. It has been an emotional day, as we've heard from those who knew her best, and that includes her fiance, Sierra Neal. They were just nine days away from getting married when Officer Burton was shot. Tonight, we have team coverage as we honor this fallen hero, Richmond Police Officer Sierra Burton. Our Rich Nye was at the funeral this morning. He's covering the canine units that honored Burton during the service. Lauren Kostick is covering Richmond Police Department's last call before the procession started here to Indianapolis. And our Emily Longnecker is at, at, uh, at Crown Hill Cemetery where Burton will be laid to rest. John Duran is live in Knightstown for us where they did a special tribute to Officer Burton. We want to begin tonight with Rich Nye kicking off our coverage. Rich. Jenny, this day remembering Richmond Police Officer Sierra Burton began here at Richmond High School. There were no classes today. School was canceled for Officer Burton's funeral. Ever since Sierra Burton became a police officer in Richmond four years ago, she wanted to become a canine handler. That happened for her back in March, and she was assigned her dog, Brev. Now, today's funeral, among the hundreds of law enforcement officers, were many canine handlers and their dogs. And before the funeral began in the 5,000 seat arena, those canine units walked past the casket as the final group of officers before the service began. And then after the funeral, canine officers lined the sidewalk. Brev, again, that's Sierra Burton's canine, he led the casket and the procession to the hearse. I talked to a canine officer from nearby Newcastle about Brev losing his handler. They're very high driven and so they accept that relatively well. So I'm sure now that he will move on to something more permanent, that he will adjust very well and I'm sure he will live a good life. I'm sure they will, they will take good care of him in Sierra's memory. Officer Burton and Brev were called to a traffic stop on August 10th in Richmond. Brev had conducted a sniff search and detected possible narcotics when Officer Burton was shot in the head and she died 39 days later. Today's funeral lasted about an hour, but there were so many police cars here to be part of the procession. The hearse did not leave Richmond High School until 90 minutes after that funeral had concluded beginning that trip eventually to Indianapolis. But the first stop after leaving here was the Richmond Police Department for another special tribute to Officer Burton. And that's where we find Lauren Costa continue our coverage tonight. Lauren. Well, Rich, the 1042 call is always one of the most emotional parts of the procession because it officially marks the end of Officer Sierra Burton's watch. And just earlier, we saw her hearse stop right in front of her police cruiser outside the police department, and everyone went silent as dispatch announced over the speaker her end of watch. Take a listen. K-9 Officer Burton demonstrated commitment, professionalism, and dedication. Every moment of every day and proudly wore the badge as a warrior for her community. The impact of that commitment and dedication was shown today with dozens coming out to say their final goodbye. Thankful for the privilege of having someone like Sierra watching over their community. Well, I just wanted to be here today. Um, to show my respect for uh, that ultimate sacrifice that she gave and the, the true fighter that she was uh, as she fought uh, to, uh, to try to live. And as a law-protecting citizen and police officer, I just felt it's my duty as veteran to, to honor her in that sense. You know, she was really compassionate. She, she was. She still is. 
Even after the procession, Officer Burton's memorial outside the police department continues to grow. People still dropping off more flowers, cards, and notes today, promising to never forget the sacrifice she made. And after the procession wrapped up here in Richmond, it headed down to Indianapolis to Crown Hill Cemetery. And that's where Emily Longnecker is right now. Emily, what are you seeing out there? Well, Lauren, right now it is very quiet. People are speaking in hushed tones. We just got done listening to bagpipes uh, from the funeral procession, a real signal of the solemnity of this moment, of this occasion. Uh, officers are gathered from around the country here. You can see them right there standing, awaiting the arrival of Officer Burton's casket to arrive here at the Heroes of Public Safety section of Crown Hill for the final committal ceremony. They were all part of today's procession from Richmond that came here to Crown Hill Cemetery. Over 500 vehicles, officers from, a far, from as far away as Portland, Oregon and Texas. The coach carrying Officer Burton's casket was the last to arrive. It is here and the reason for that, it, it's a symbol. These officers came first. It's a symbol of them leading their fellow officer to her final resting place here at Crown Hill in the Heroes of Public Safety section. There's going to be a lot of symbolism that you're going to see here today in the coming moments. A riderless horse with a saddle with the stirrups on um, backwards symbolizing an officer who will ride no more. Officers are wearing white carnations behind their badges with a red dot in the middle. Those white carnations, the white symbolizes a life and career well done, well lived. The red dot in the middle symbolizes the sacrifice of Officer Burton and the blood that was shed here. We're also going to see Richmond Police Chief Michael Britt present a folded flag to Burton's mom. And then finally, you are going to see officers pass by her casket and lay their carnations on her casket with the final carnation uh, that will be laid by her stepmother, Amy, who is also a Richmond police officer. So we are waiting um, for this committal service to start at any moment. Before that happens, though, I want to send it to my colleague, John Duran, who has been in Knightstown, where folks came out today to pay their respects to Officer Burton. John. Emily, only about 30, 35 miles outside of Richmond, on the way to Indianapolis here in Knightstown. People lined these sidewalks, and I mean packed these sidewalks to honor that fallen officer, Sierra Burton. People were emotional. It was quiet out here. But not only just residents of Knightstown, a lot of people knowing each other, familiar faces, neighbors, a very close-knit community coming out here, but also the local first responders paying their respects as well. You saw a fire engine hanging an American flag to greet that procession. Many people holding American flags themselves as they watched Officer Burton pass through their community. And everyone I spoke with said never was a question if they would head out this afternoon and pay their respects. My son's a policeman. He's actually a detective in Anderson. They are what protects us. So it hits a home because that could be my son. I think everybody for coming out and showing this respect that our officers and our front people need. They all need our support as much as we can do. Yeah, and people were coming out in droves here in Knightstown, showing their support, like I said, holding flags, holding flags, showing their support for police officers, also decorating the light poles with blue ribbon to honor uh, Officer Burton. This just passed through the community of Knightstown. There was no stop or anything like that, but still, that meant so much to these people as they were able to say a final goodbye to Officer Burton on her way to Crown Hill Cemetery. I'll send it back to you in the studio. Yeah, John, and you know it also meant so much to those officers supporting her to drive by and see that sea of support on the streets. Thanks for your live report. Uh, we do understand that uh, the officer, Sierra Burton's body has now reached Crown Hill Cemetery. So we do want to take you live there to Crown Hill. You can see the flags, the thin blue line flag, as well as the American flags lining the route to the Heroes of Public Safety section. You can hear in the distance bagpipes as she's being escorted to her final resting place.
And as we watch this scene so steeped in tradition, I also want to bring in Gary Woodruff. He's the police chief in Lawrence, has seen far too many of these funerals, but also can provide us some insight on what's such an important ceremony, saying our final farewell. Absolutely, yeah, there are many traditions that are derived from really military mm -hmm. uh, history. And, uh, you know, law enforcement agencies are paramilitary organizations. So uh, we borrow a lot of traditions, including the, the, the bagpipes, the 21 gun salute, uh, the riderless horse with the boots facing backwards. Those are all borrowed traditions from military history. And what we're seeing here, this is the honor guard, correct? Yes, this is the flag honor guard here. Uh, you'll see several flags there. Uh, and uh, including the department flag and obviously the American flag and state flag, et cetera. But uh, this is the beginning of the, of the, uh, of the, of the ceremony uh, in, in Crown Hill, Hill there. It's such a serene place also. Really it's is. amazing how quiet all those people gathered there. It can be just so quiet. And as horrific and tragic as the reason that we are here, right. it really is such a beautiful place to say a prayer to share your thoughts and for everyone to gather for this final farewell. Well, and everybody's reflecting, everybody's reflecting on, on Officer Burton, on her family, on the Richmond Police Department, and really the law enforcement profession in general. You can see here the bagpipers. We'll take a listen in so you can kind of get a feel um, of the solemnity and the tradition happening at Crown Hill.
Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. From the ground we were formed into the ground we return. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the life and the substance of our fallen sister officer, Sierra Burton. We now commit her earthly body to these hallowed grounds alongside her fellow heroes of public safety, and we commit her spirit to you, Lord. And as the sun now sets on our departed sister's earthly life, we are reminded that though she has fallen, she did not fall short in her commitment to your cause of justice and peace. I thank you for the women and men who continue to faithfully stand the thin blue line that separates good from evil. 
Thank you for protecting and shielding them from the spirit of evil. And Lord God, though the words we speak today may fade, we know that our prayers will always be remembered by you. And Father, we pray and pledge that we will never forget her sacrifice and what was done here. We pray in your holy and precious name. Amen.